Hey everyone, Stax here, and today we're checking out the big finale, Powers of X number six, ending this run of this House of X, Powers of X series that's been going on for 12 weeks now. And in my opinion, this is one of the most exciting things that Marvel has done in a long time, especially with the X-Men franchise that they tried to torpedo in favor of the Inhumans back when they lost the movie rights. And what Jonathan Hickman has done here is besides putting together a great storyline, he's been able to revitalize what my friend Wes over at Thinking Critical, what he would call one of the major tent poles of Marvel Comics. And that's an IP that can carry more than one title. There's only a handful of them and the X-Men had really fallen out of that category for some time, but now it is back. And I could talk more about this going forward, but let's go ahead and get into the book. The book starts with a quote from Professor X, and now we build. And it jumps to the story. And it jumps back to Powers of X number one when we were at the fair or the carnival. And what follows is six exact pages from the uh, Powers of X number one, which obviously I get it. This conversation is very important, but... I've seen it already. It rehashes the tarot cards and several things that we know or suspect are going to be important going forward. This scene ends once again with Professor X reading Moira's mind and, realize, and seeing everything all the multiple lives prior. And from there we jump forward to the timeline X3, 1000 years in the future. And we're inside the preserve with the librarian. And at this moment when the librarian steps into the preserve, she lets out a sigh. He, she, I don't know what it is. but just lets out a sigh and you know that this this event everything that's going on with the phalanx is taxing to to her it's it's troubling it's bothering her and it's at that moment that out of nowhere suddenly somebody tries to attack the librarian and she simply holds up a hand and said this aggression is pointless and the librarian just takes a second and says look do you know how much more advanced i am than you by the time you were telling your muscles to fire to attack me i had already prepared countermeasures to ensure your failure regardless i mean you no harm it's after that that suddenly someone else is speaking to the librarian well telepathically says you understand it though right they just want to be free not locked up here in this zoo and the librarian responds, how could anyone want something they don't know exists? Wanting to be free would mean they're capable of accurately observing this manufactured environment, the system we have to keep them enslaved. They don't want to be free. They don't know what free is. I think it, this is simply their nature. And that's when you find out that the person the librarian is talking to is Logan. And he says, nah. They want to be free. They know what it is. I make sure to fill their heads each day with stories of revolution of the enslaved rising up to overthrow their masters. You'll see. Give it time. And after that, the librarian does something really interesting. And she just simply starts speaking English to Logan. And that kind of throws him off. He's like, whoa, wait, English? Really? And the librarian makes it clear that they're about to have a very nuanced conversation and there's no room for mistakes in this. But before they have that conversation, they're waiting for her, and her is Moira McTaggart. And you find out a couple very interesting things here. Basically, Moira was able to live because her and Wolverine have the same blood type, and he would give her blood transfusions in order to, to keep her healthy and keep her alive. The other thing we discover is much deeper underneath the surface, and that's that the librarian, whoever this person is, is having doubts about the ascension. Well, in the librarian's words, not having concerns but questioning the wisdom of such a such an action. And we know that the librarian is having doubts because the librarian has no reason to be here talking to these two. The librarian explains to both Moira and Wolverine that tomorrow the world ends. Tomorrow we are absorbed by the phalanx. And when that happens, we cease to be. We cease to be sentient beings and we become part of a collective. And once they are part of that phalanx collective, they will travel towards the nearest black hole well, they will merge with the godlike intellect of a dominion. And as a dominion, they would live outside of space and time. And at this point, Moira, kind of looking shocked, says, The world's ending tomorrow. And Wolverine adds, And we're all going to die. But this is where things take a real turn when suddenly the librarian tells him, Almost everyone's going to die. I've arranged to send you off planet. And this raises both Moira and Wolverine's curiosity as to why. And the librarian explains that he's gathered from observing them what will happen if Moira dies. And he knows that if Moira dies before the phalanx reaches the nearest black hole, 
that this timeline will cease to exist. However, and here's the real catch, the librarian explains that if the phalanx reaches the black hole prior to Moira's death, that, that they, living outside of space and time and knowing what they know about Moira, they wouldn't allow her to be a threat to the phalanx or to the Dominion. And to quote the librarian here, and I think it's very likely we would not tolerate something like you having any power over something like us. And at this point, Wolverine's impatience gets the better of him. He's just starting to, what kind of game are you playing? It doesn't make any sense that you're telling us this. Why would you? And Moyer stops him and says, let him finish. And like I said earlier, the, the response from the librarian is, it's a fair question, no. Why would I tell you? Why would I be conflicted? My problem is this, I question the wisdom of it becoming something that's really just an idea of existence, something immaterial, to never touch something again, never walking through the woods, never seeing the wonders I see with my post-human eyes. So I'm faced with a question. Do I let you die and perhaps in your next life you can prevent our becoming part of the universal machine state, what I suspect might be a fake existence, or do I send you away and find out for myself? And Moira looks at him with these determined eyes. You want me to convince you? The librarian responds, yes. How would you prevent it? With all you've learned in your many lives, how would you stop us from losing our post-humanity and surrendering to the machines? And of course, Wolverine's straightforward, unassailable logic on this is you stop post-humanity at the humanity part of it. And what the librarian explains next changes everything. Because he explains to them that you thought you were the evolutionary inevitable. But the librarian explains that you weren't. Mutants were a response to the environment and they occurred naturally. They were the next step in human evolution. But what happens when humanity stops being beholden to its environment? When man controls the building blocks of biology and technology, evolution is no longer a match for genetic engineering. What good was one mutant adapting to its environment when we can make 10 supermen? You thought it was the machines that would defeat you, but we just used them to buy time. The Sentinels bought us years. Nimrod bought us decades. And Moyer's just standing there, just, I, I never saw it. And the librarian responds, I guess you never will. After all, if you weren't capable of recognizing the real enemy you face, how could you ever defeat them? Maybe this is just how it ends for you. And if you have no real alternative to offer, maybe this is my fate as well. Immortality, divinity, as I have no choice but to become a small part of God. And right as the librarian says that, he gets three claws right through the head. And you find out in the conversation that follows this that all this time they've stayed alive for one reason, and that one reason is to find out what are they trying to defeat? What was the real enemy and why did they fail? And just like at the end of the Ninth Life, it's down to Moira and Wolverine and they're looking each other in the eyes and Wolverine tells her, close your eyes, Moira. She says, no, my eyes are open and they're gonna stay that way, just make it quick. And he replies, don't worry, darling, this is what I do. And so ended the sixth life of Moira X, the sixth life. From there, we get a white page that I'll discuss later, and then we go to this shot of Professor X, and it's the follow-up to him reading Moira's mind and seeing everything that happened over these lives. And even for someone like Professor X, it's overwhelming. And after Charles Xavier is able to recover, he's hit with the realization that we we lose. We always lose. And he does what anybody would do. He tries to grasp it. How, how could I do better? How could I solve this in another way? What can I do? How can I do more? But finally, Moira has to look him in the eye and says, look, you're a good man who believes in the goodness of other, and it breaks my heart that I have to break that part of you. But I will break it because that's what has to happen now. And finally, as their conversation comes to a close and they begin to walk off, she explains that you're gonna fight me, just like Eric is gonna fight me, but we means we have to do this all together, all of us. And Charles, you've been dreaming the wrong dream, and it's time, past time, that you woke up. From there, it cuts to a couple pages of Moira's journal, which I'll go over those at the end as well, because it's just white page stuff. It's, it's important, but I think it's probably best covered at the end. So from there, we jump to yesterday in Krakoa, in Moira's no space. And what we have is Professor Xavier and Magneto arriving and having a talk with Moira. And basically, 
we find she they're catching her up on what's going on with the establishment of the government and other in things. particular they have a big discussion regarding the quiet council she asks in particular why are only 11 of the 12 seats filled and they have to explain that well we're waiting on Emma Frost to name the Red King. Other concerns are expressed about Sinister, basically the idea that the only reason he's on the council is so they can keep an eye on him, and Exodus, who has a very unflinching ideology and how dangerous that can be. And the other person that concerns them is Mystique, because the only reason they could get her on the council was to promise that they would bring back Destiny. For you that don't know, Mystique and Destiny's relationship goes all the way back past the Days of Future Past time. I mean, it's a, it's a long-standing relationship in Marvel Comics. So it's only natural that they she would want to bring her back, but Moira makes it very clear that you cannot do that. There cannot be precogs on Krakow. And Moira explains why. It's like, what if she comes back and she sees that all, all these pasts lead to us failing? What if they see that the real truth that we always lose and tells everyone that. And this is where it's kind of re revealed that Moira is still very skeptical about their chances. She said, you really want them to know that we always lose. And Professor X and Magneto stand there and say that the truth is that until now we have always lost, but this time is going to be different for we are different. Not only that, but they say that everyone eventually deserves to know just the way that Charles and Eric know. And we're different because you've made us different but now it's time for you to step aside and let us do the good work for which we were created. And the parting shot of Powers of X is Professor X and, and Magneto talking up on the hill. And Professor Xavier says, then we do more, whatever the cost, whatever it takes. This is all there is, Eric. We live and die with this, you and I. And Magneto responds, then I will die for it. And if I fail, then you will raise me up and I will show this world what a real mutant is. Professor X smiling says, keep talking like that. You're going to elicit a response. And Magneto with this beautiful line, I am not ashamed of what I am. Let them try to stop us this time. And Professor X looks up into the trees of Krakow and says, yes, let them try. And that, of course, is our final quote. I am not ashamed of what I am, Magneto. So the first white page is the branching of humanity. We're familiar with Homo Superior, which is a natural evolutionary successor to humanity, and we're familiar with Homo Sapien, which according to this reaches its natural evolutionary dead end within two to four generations. But then you have Homo Novacina, and it explains that this is a manufactured branch, that it doesn't have to do with the restrictions of environment or in any evolutionary constraints. It also explains that this is a, a post-humanity leap in evolution results in a technology technological leap in innovation and it continues to leapfrog basically until one finally reaches an end state the next discussion is of moira's journal it begins with entry number 17 which is about xavier how he has basically the cloning resurrection process the idea for it it also discusses magneto and how the idea of a stronghold, which is like the island of Krakoa, is planted in his head. And it also discusses the emergence of Apocalypse. And how, at first, the biggest thing they have to do with him is prevent an Omega-level mutant from following him and wreaking complete destruction on the Earth. From there, we also find out that Xavier and Magneto, when they went to go visit Bar Sinister and make the deal with the devil, I mean, with Mr. Sinister, it, Moira didn't know that this happened. And not too long after that, that's in four entries difference, they lose Magneto. They, for whatever reason, he has become an enemy to the cause and is no longer siding with Xavier and Moira. Not too long after that, Xavier and Moira, basically the decision is made that she is going to remove herself from the equation so that, because the plan's at risk. So what they do is they use a Shi'ar Golem, a living husk, and they test the early theories about using Cerebro and making a backup copy. And then that copy they're going to use as the copy of Moira. Just basically they can use that. And what they use that copy for is basically to fake her death. All right, so that wraps up Powers of X. Now let's, let's talk about this for just a second. First of all, I love this book. I've loved this series. Jonathan Hickman has done incredible things, like I talked about at the very beginning of this video. I'm very excited for the X-Men moving forward. I do think it's interesting that the robot human uh, superiority that was, it's ultimately their humanity, their desire, the librarian's desire for humanity 
that puts us on this track for Moira's 10th life. Well, I guess technically her 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, and possibly 11th life. But the, the mechanical side of it, the robotic side of it, is saying become part of this phalanx, become part of this dominion, and you become this greater. But the humanity in them is ultimately the one holding on and saying, yeah, but that's that's not desirable to me. So I think the librarian definitely knew what he was doing. Uh, Wolverine killing him was not a big deal. He, think, I think, expected it, maybe even allowed it. And it's very interesting that these, that the Sentinels, that Nimrod, all of this was basically a delaying tactic to the ultimate threat, was this, which was this genetic, um, genetic engineering, so that they can design their own superhumans. And so, how does all of this really come into play? And what does what are we looking at going forward? It means that this resurrection process is in the current timeline. It means that the elimination of the mother mold, which delayed Nimrod's coming online, bought the X-Men some time. It also means that the X-Men now know who the real enemy is. And they have to find whoever this is that is the genetic master. It's a very sinister sounding anyways guys i'm going to try to do a video basically taking and cataloging everything in chronological order the lives of moira from her point of view and uh it'll take me a couple days prior to get that video done but i plan on having that up so make sure you hit the subscribe button leave a comment down below tell me what you think how excited are you moving forward with this x-men franchise now of all the additional titles coming out which ones do you plan on picking up i plan on picking up all of them seeing which ones i like and definitely reviewing them for the channel to include wolverine which was just announced at new york city comic con this weekend anyways guys i really appreciate you watching thanks for taking the time to hit that subscribe button leaving a like leaving a comment and guys that's all i got for you today probably try to do a stream or something later because this is just too good to pass up that's all i got real comic stacks out